So, ladies and gentlemen, you find me stood beside a giant. The giant that is the Whitechapel Bell Foundry. Founded, as it says on the sign there, way back in 1570. This business closed nine years ago. And I'm here to tell you that the building is being left to rot. This is a tragedy. This building needs to be saved. So I've come here to look at it just to see what's here and the extent of what needs to be done. Because I think just up the road there in that direction is the Tower Hamlets Town Hall. And I think some people up there should be having a little look at what's going on down here. So let's go and have a look around. I'll tell you a bit about it. So the Whitechapel Bell Foundry Company began in 1570. The last premises as we stand here at 32 to 34 Whitechapel Road, backing onto Plumbers Road, dates from 1670 and was formerly a coaching inn called the Artichoke. That got damaged in the Great Fire of London. The Artichoke ceased trading in 1738 and the following year the Whitechapel Bell Foundry moved into the premises. The foundry remained at the site until May 2017. It was one of only two bell foundries left in the UK and had been in continuous production for almost 450 years. The master founders or bell makers of Allgate and Whitechapel, however, can be traced back to 1420. The three bells manufacturer's mark can be seen on the bells and the three bells sign hung over the door at the Whitechapel site. According to the previous owners, Alan and Catherine Hughes, the foundry had been a family-owned company throughout its history, continuing when Alan Hughes' grandfather bought the company in 1904, until its sale to the Wesley Group in 2017. Through the centuries, the business had to adapt in modern time, with new churches being built less frequently, uh, they moved into handbells and doorbells. It responded to a surge in orders for table bells following the popularity of the ITV period drama Downton Abbey. Didn't serve, <laughs> with a third of its sales going overseas. In 2013, the foundry launched an online shop selling house bells, musical instruments and personalised merchandise. The large bell business has been largely unaffected by periods of financial depression, partly owing to the fact that from inquiry to completion, an order can often take up to 11 years. During World War II, the foundry was used as a munitions production line where they made castings for the war office. The foundry was particularly busy after the war, replacing bells lost and damaged by fire in bombing raids across London. In March 2017, a consortium of heritage groups including Save Britain's Heritage, the East End Preservation Society, the Society of the Protection of Ancient Buildings, the Ancient Monument Society and the Royal Academy of Arts attempted to have the Boundary's Grade 2 style premises relisted as Grade 1 listed building as an asset of community value. The foundry was sold to a US investor called Raycliffe who proposed their intention to convert the site into a 108 room hotel with a bell themed cafe while maintaining the space for the production of smaller bells, including handbells. The application has been controversial, however. The London Bell Factory, a not-for-profit company dedicated to saving the historic foundries, a working enterprise, made an offer to purchase the site in November 1922. In 1752, the foundry, then known as Leicester & Pack, cast the Liberty Bell which was commissioned to celebrate the 50th anniversary of William Penn's 1701 Charter of Privileges, Pennsylvania's original constitution. As a result of damage sustained during its stormy passage across the Atlantic, the bell cracked when it was first rung and after repeated repairs cracked again in 1846 when rung to mark the birthday of George Washington. Since 2003, the bell has been housed at the Liberty Bell Centre near Independence Hall. Big Ben, another well-known bell, which tolls the hour at the Palace of Westminster, was cast in 1858 and rung for the first time on May 1859. Big Ben weighs 13.5 tonnes and is the largest bell ever cast at the foundry. The bell also cracked because a too heavy hammer was used. The crack and the subsequent returning gives Big Ben its present distinctive tone. A profile template of Big Ben surrounds the entrance door of the Whitechapel foundry 
while the original moulding gauge is retained near the furnaces. The final bill for Big Ben came to £572. The Whitechapel foundry has supplied bells to several cathedrals including Guildford Cathedral had a peal of 10 bells, Canterbury Cathedral augmented its bells to a peal of 14, the National Cathedral in Washington DC, the foundry produced Great Tom at Lincoln Cathedral, the clock bells at St Paul's Cathedral, the bells of Westminster Abbey. Upon the completion of its tower between 1924 and 1942, the foundry cast 14 bells for Liverpool Cathedral, which all include psalm text engravings. The bells are notable for being the heaviest change ringing peal of bells in the world. The Whitechapel Bell Foundry also designed the Olympic bell seen at the opening ceremony for the London 2012 Olympic Games, although it was not cast on the premises. The last bell to be cast at the foundry was on the 22nd of March 2017 and was given to the Museum of London along with historical artefacts from the premises. The manufacturing patents for the Whitechapel bells have all been sold to the bell hanging company Whites of Appleton in Oxfordshire with whom the Whitechapel foundry had worked for 197 years. So that begs the question, what is going to happen with this building? Will it be rescued? Will the local council step in? Will historic England step in? I mean, this is historic. I sincerely hope that um, somebody takes responsibility because if this is lost, that would be a tragic loss of British history and world history, as we know. Their bells went around the world. So come on, people. Let's step up. Let's step up to the plate. Let's rescue this building. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video uh, from here in Whitechapel. And don't forget the uh, details down below on how you can contact the town council here at Tower Hamlets, if you feel moved to. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing the next one, wherever that is, because I don't know where it's going to be yet. But for now, bye.